are first, Jurgen. Good morning, everybody. Unless, of course, you're not on the West Coast with me, and then it's probably good afternoon or good evening. How are you doing this this fine day, Jeff? We got some metal in the fire, but today is a special day because I've got a guest. It'll be a guest smith doing the uh, forging today. Hey, Kevin. Aloha. <laughs> Getting things situated. My guest has decided to break out his uh, webcam just to have another camera in the shop. Good morning, Shane. Oh, it's Shane, not uh, Jurgen. Dag Nabbit. <laughs> yes, Bruce is, uh, is uh, shop dog is with us today. <laughs> but no, he is not going to be the one smithing today. What am I looking for? Ah, oh, my coffee. There it is. So now I get to join in the in, in the drinking game in that uh, if I wanted to, I could have the beverage be uh, uh, spicy because I'm not doing the blacksmithing today. I might be an assistant, but one of the, the gentlemen that uh, got me started in uh, actually laying hands on tools is here. He's a, an excellent uh, uh, leather smith but he also is quite capable uh, blacksmith of his own right. Because we used to all hang out in a, um, in a renaissance group called Adrian Empire. Some of you might remember him from the last time he was here. And uh, <laughs> eat up your coffee, there you go. <laughs> hey Rob, welcome to the party. But, uh, it was it was him and a gentleman named that we call Cullen. Um, and as soon as he gets back here, I'll introduce him, you know, face to face to everybody. In the meantime, I will switch over to another view here and show what I finished up last week. In case anybody didn't get to see that. So we're going to go down to, let's see, yes, nope, let's try this again. We'll go to the anvil, that's what we want to do. So, this was the project of the month, last month, and I was happy that I was able to get it all finished up last week. Is it uh, a gorgeous piece of art? Nah. But uh, does it uh, show that I'm starting to get the fundamentals down? I think so. Um, I will say that these uh, collars were much harder than I thought they would be. I don't know if there's tooling you need to make that uh, would make that easier, but I will say uh, a torch would have made it easier, and I still don't have one of those. The same with the um, the tenons. Getting these things peened in, um, that was a pain, mainly because I was still trying to heat using my uh, 
propane for it. Now it's a little bit bent, a little bit wonky, but it is functional. And I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. Really kind of proud of, you know, the, the scope of the work and the execution, you know, has areas of improvement. I learned some things about doing these bone over leaves. Um, starting with thicker material would probably be smarter simply because I could put better bevels on it. Um, but also, um, blowing them over in the right direction would be, um, you know, uh, is something I figured out how to do in the future. I, uh, I did reverse the process, but reversing the process wasn't quite the right thing to do. Um, but all in all, it is a functional boot scraper, and I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. Really, Kevin? inspired you that's that's uh you know i didn't expect to inspire people so that's pretty cool so there it is i just wanted to bring it back out here one last time at the beginning of the, of the live stream here so folks can see it i'm going to let it just rust up i spent so much time getting rid of the scale but um i am going to go ahead and just let it rust up because uh, that's really not going to affect anything about this thing um, the one thing i didn't do which I still would like to do is uh, touch mark it, uh, just so I can, you know, say I did it. But uh, yeah, that's that's the the um, what was that March project? The April project is to do something with angle iron, uh, 36 inches, no more. Um, you could be less. Uh, and uh, no bigger than two by two angle iron, and it has to be all angle iron. So those are the only restrictions that I'm aware of, um, and I've got an idea of what I want to do there. Um, but I'm not going to call it out yet because I've still got to draw up stuff. This one really is going to require drawing because it's going to be a lot of chisel work. But in the meantime, my guest has, has arrived, so let's switch over to that camera. And uh, we'll tilt it. That's the man you're going to be watching. Say hi, Roy. <laughs> Roy. Earl. <laughs> Call me whatever you want. This is my buddy Earl. He's one of the two guys that got me started in blacksmithing with the Renaissance Reenactment Group. And it was a whole hell of a lot of fun. I knew it would be. And uh, I did it every, I did it like three weekends a year with these guys and uh at most um and uh it was just so much fun that finally when i got where i could be you know doing it all the time i started doing it all the time so he brought me a webcam to hook up let me see if it's something i can mount some it doesn't have a it doesn't have the it doesn't have the foot does it? It have, so. all right so we'll have to figure something out um, Who's got the duct tape? Doo, doo, doo. I'll think about this. Yeah. I think I can work something out. I mean, I don't know if, how I'll use it yet, but I think I can work something out. In the meantime, Earl can, um, can surprise us as to what he's going to make. Now, I'm going to stay out of the way because there's only so much room, as you all know, in this smithy. Well, I'm not going to do anything crazy to start with. Kind of warm up the muscles a little bit. I got some steel going on, uh, heating up in the fire. I don't know if you guys can see it in the back there. Um, I'm going to start with just a simple little uh, uh, bottle opener. So I'm going to punch a hole and drift it out a little bit, make a bottle opener, and we'll see what happens. There you go.
Hey, Robert. Welcome to the show. Oh, let's go ahead and actually show people that. I still can't get this right. Let me give you something else that would be useful here. that at uh, at Co Coastal or something, I think, and was like, oh, that'll be great. I'll just keep my coffee. Wait a minute. <laughs> it's perfect for uh, holding, uh, you know, punch lube or, or um, you know, can of water to cool it off. A couple more punches here and we'll flip it over. Yep. This uh, cold anvil is sucking the heat right out of my metal. <laughs> we were just discussing this morning about preheating anvils. It was hilarious. So it's going to be a short show uh, today, guys, because uh, we have the last show that we're going to go see for the season at the uh, um, Broadway, you know, theater run. We're going to go see Beetlejuice. So my wife told me I have to wrap it up early so I can redress for uh, for the uh, for the show. That didn't work like I wanted. That's what the Pritchell hole's for. I know. Should share this time. Must have been a little off center. It's okay, you're gonna drift it. Hey, Alexis. <laughs> Probably from the strawberry that they got from the field. How's it going, Jerry? For those uh, who are just arriving, we got a uh, good, good friend. Um, there we go, cheered out. Um, that got me, one of the two people that got me started in blacksmithing visiting me today. Hey, you see, I dropped a hole through it. Not real pretty, but. Hold on. Hole. There we go. Hey, you know what, Jeff? There's no pressure about these challenges, right? So, you join when you can join. I was a lurker for a while. Thompson had asked me to, to join in for a while, so. In the meantime, let me see if I can get this other camera. Do, 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 do. Properties. Cancel. Let's go to do, 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 do. sources. There we go. We're going to go here. We're going to go here. Hey, look at that. Logitech Brio. Hit OK. 
Does it see anything? Ah, it would be helpful if I turned it on. It does see something. I haven't figured out how to make it st sit still so I can actually use it, but. That's about right. Getting it open. Just for fun, we're going to switch over here and see what this new camera looks like. Not bad. That works well. From across the room. Yeah. Well, I just have to come up with a good mount for it. It really is meant to sit over the edge of a monitor. Yep, yep. So, at least now I know this is not one I want to order because I I know what is important to me, which is to have that cold foot. Yeah, yeah. There's a, I have another one, a little better one, that I don't travel with that has a, a foot. It's okay, I wouldn't have, I mean, I knew having a cold foot was something I'd want, but. There we go. Now we all can turn around and say howdy to everybody. And I can say howdy to everybody. And we're both saying howdy to everybody. Thank you, Kevin. Hitting that like button's always nice to have happen. Need to drift it just a little more. So Shane, Earl's another one like us that uh, we can't have too many bottle openers. So have a trick I learned. If you wet your hand when you're drifting, it does give you a little bit of insulation. No, oh, as you're steaming? Yeah. I need a longer drift, but that's the material I had at the moment. Drift, it works. Get it out. <laughs> yeah, the real Jurgen is here. Yeah. <laughs> I accidentally called Shane Jurgen because I thought Ulf Bergen automatically went German. And it's true, that is his fortune's name, but wrong name. The sequel to Beetlejuice, yeah, we're looking forward to that. It's a farm soundtrack, yeah, not because I live on a farm or anything. <laughs> Yeah, I've forged in different places. Never, uh, never with the background of turkeys yelling at me from next to much north. The turkeys really do 
yell at you for making for clanking on the on the anvil. Yeah, Shane, I told uh, Earl, we asked him, you know, what I like to eat, what I like to drink. Earl said, you know, as long as there's beer. And I was like, I have enough beer to keep you stopped for the whole time he's here. So, not an issue. So that's not too hot then. Good. What's that? The end of the rest of the bar. Yep. It's not a big space, is it, Earl? Big enough. You talk of the new Ghostbusters with the uh, with the kids and the um, homage to um, the dirt. Oh, darn it, I know his name. Spangler? I love that one. I thought it was a really, really decent reboot. I like the one with the woman too, but that was a nice way to reboot everything. The one with the women, in my opinion, is like an alternate universe Ghostbusters. Drive it through. You're going through this. There it is. Fine. So what do you think of that hammer? Nice that one, nice that one came from. Uh, oh darn it! I know the name of it. Oh, that I bet it was hot, wasn't it? Not too bad. Fire Creek Forge. Yep, another uh, another YouTube blacksmith. Meaning, of course, none of us are real blacksmiths because we're YouTube blacksmiths. Actually, he's a bladesmith. I mean, I know that he can do other blacksmithing stuff. I've seen him do it, but he's his focus really is bladesmithing. Clearly, he made the hammer. Very nice hammer. Nice weight. Love the handle. I love that handle. I mean, when he said he was going to be able to make some hammers with the with the uh, shorter handles, and with that nice swell on the end, I was like, I'm all in. I got uh, went camping a couple of months ago. I bought a a bag of fire hydrant and a pre-cut you know, pre-cut firewood, you know, a little bundle of firewood. Yeah. Most of the wood was really yeah. nice. There was a square block, probably four by four by probably 12 inches, 13 inches. It's going to be a couple of hammer, hammer handles in there. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's see if we can open up this pie a little bit here. Oh, let me pivot over there. I don't think you need the, uh, the quench anymore, do you? Uh, no, no. Okay. Now, I'm going to retire this camera. I think it was a neat idea, but... Uh, what, my camera? Yeah. I can't get it to be stable in, in its oh, place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... I uh, do it. Uh -oh. Where did my phone go? Okay, good. Yep. Still connected. We're good. <laughs> Doing the strip tease. right around the corner here. I keep wanting to get out to see him. So, 
uh, just have really made it happen. Thank you for coming in here. I feel really privileged to have you stopping in my live stream. I am doing extremely well, sir. How about you? I've got a guest uh, Smith in the in the Smithy today. He's only visiting me for a couple of days, but he knew I needed to get him out here. I'm sure that can be arranged. Well, a Guinness do? Yeah, Guinness at work. That's right. You need it in about 15 minutes? What's that? You need about 15 minutes? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Plenty, plenty. Here's the old forge. I am not throwing it away yet because the body is still good. I may end up buying a set of those burners. I would, I'd put it into service for... Something, yeah. You know? get, get, some, get creative with some... For people who have a reminder, here's the old one. But the uh, burners gave up. So, keeping forge. But the fact is, these forges don't serve my purpose in a lot of cases. Like this one either. I already told you about it, but I'll bring it up in conversation here. Both of these forges turn out to really be blade forges. Yes. Yeah. Even the long one here is a blade forge. It's just made, meant for longer blades if necessary. And with the scroll work I like to do, that doesn't work out very well for me. So I have a suspicion the future holds a, a good old fashioned flat table That's what forge for me. Glad to hear it, Tim. I really, really, really enjoyed watching your your channel when you were uh, when you were able to keep going with it. So when you don't have it, well, it's hard to know when it's because things happen that are good or bad. So I'm glad to hear you're in good shape. The, uh, the the one where they froze everything. I haven't seen that one yet because we aren't doing movie theaters uh, yet in the household. 
So I am excited to see that one. A Jack and Tim Kodak show. That's absolutely right. That would be awesome. Well, if Tim ever wants to swing by or, you know, drop me a note where he is and I'll just take the show on the road. Not that Tim doesn't have all the stuff to do it. <laughs> He's literally, I'm just rough guesstimate, 20 minutes away from me at most. Because I'm over here in Kent and he's over in Puyallup, if I remember correctly. So. I'm barely in Kent. And you broke out my second favorite hammer. Oh, Crosby? The, the hoppy style one, yeah. It's got a longer handle than the way he likes to have them, but... Yeah, I like to choke up a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm right here on the uh, Kent Arden line. If I stood on, on the Ag Valley, if I stood on my roof of my house, I could see uh, the Emerald Downs. As it is, I can sit out there uh, every morning and watch the sunrise over uh, um, Rainier, which you know, I'm sure you can probably do too, unless you're stuck behind other people. Yeah, if I hadn't already committed to going to uh, um, the uh, uh, Quad State this year, I'd probably be doing the uh, the one that's happening near us here. I think it's going to be in Longview. Really would have loved to have gone down there for that. Oh. Our, our, our uh, favorite guest visitor, she actually is the owner of the land here, is, uh, is uh, checking out things. She hasn't stopped by since I got the new uh, forge. I thought the forge was basically putting her off. I'll spin it around so you guys can say hello to Rosie. Rosie, your fans are saying hi. <laughs> you getting the shape you want there, Earl? Nope. Thank you, sir. Yeah, oh, he's making a bottle opener. It's coming together. <coughs> Do a little bit of a fit test here. Got to widen it up. A little bit, just a little bit. Yep. It's going to take a minute because that cools it all the way down. One hundred and seventy-two days, twenty-two hours. You, you left off the minutes, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, we're actually going to turn it into a a, a, a visit family affair. Uh, we're going to fly into Indianapolis uh, with my uh, father-in-law, 
and my wife and my father-in-law will stay back while uh, his uh, sisters come uh, come over to visit him, and then I'm going to take the the minivan and hoof it over to uh, to Quad State. Might have a, have a partner in that. We'll see. Depends on if they can get the time off. I do need to figure out what the uh, camping situation there is. So I know if I have to, you know, uh, if it's first come, first serve, or what the heck's going on there. It's not a cold day, but that steel is cooling off fast today. All right. Ah, there you go. <laughs> we got the minutes and seconds in there. Oh, there you go. You got the right size now. Now you just need the thumbnail. Yep. I always use, so in case you didn't know this, that's the tool I always use. Really? Okay. I always use, 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 use a punch. Yeah, I don't have a round punch right now. I think you went through my punches. I don't think I had a, uh, a ball punch in there. I mean, I know I don't have a ball punch in there. No, we use whatever. Now is make this section just a little thinner, easier to hold on to. Neck it. What's that? Neck it. Yeah, I'm naked. I might put a, I might put a little curve to it or something. I don't know. I think you little animal. That's the only reason it exists. I need another bigger ball peen for doing, you know, other stuff here in the future. I might, I might actually use this. I, I, I got an idea. It's also good just for you know texturing. That's my my steel anvil. I was talking about we were talking so in the uh, uh, in the show that precedes mine, uh, Impractical Blacksmiths. They were talking about uh, you know intro to anvils and of course uh, segued into naming anvils. And I said I don't actually name my anvils because my anvils are distinct enough. I just say move the steel anvil or move the Trenton anvil. But. You did get me to understand a good reason to name your things. Everything needs a name. I don't know about that. My Ford Flex is the Ford Flex. My, you know, my Nero is my Nero. But Nero is a good name. Yeah. I don't see a need to name my cars any further than that. But people do. Do you still want it to be flat when you're doing it? What's that? Do you want each side to be flat when you're done? Yeah. Okay. At least now I know what you're doing. Yep. I'm glad one of us does. <laughs> yeah, we've been, I, I, I sent Earl the link to the site because uh, I knew that the countdown clock should be up there soon. And lo and behold, it was there. <laughs> your favorite hammer is your favorite hammer. <laughs> I just refer to them by type because I don't have multiple of the same type. You know, I've got my Brazil rounding hammer. I've got my, you know, uh, Farrier's rounding hammer. I've got my uh, straight peen. I've got my cross peen. And I got my Hoffy style hammer. So I don't name those. I definitely don't name tongs, unless you want to call this one uh, the, the name of this one my ugly tongs that I can't decide 
what shape they should finally be in because I keep reshaping them. They've been bolt jaw tongs. They've been offset bolt jaw tongs. They've been, you know, good for square stock. But then I discovered that's not very good for flat stock. So I yep. decided I'm going to make flatter nibs that I can then turn into box jaw tongs. So I can have offset box jaw tongs. things a little wacky. As Bob Ross says, happy little accidents. Is that an anvil ring like that on every show or is it just, not am I just noticing it today? It's ringing pretty good. Yeah, it is. On it. Yeah, but I, I don't have any other magnets except this one right now. I didn't have any, uh, well that was sitting on there before, so yeah. maybe just stick it, yeah. I just want it out of the way, so. I know, a little bit. I would have my hearing protection, so. Yeah, and normally I wear my uh, AirPods, they turn on hearing protection automatically. That's better. Yeah, especially since I can make another pair if I need to. One of the first things I learned to do that was of any use was make tongs. Gotta start there. Ooh, that water's cold. Yep. <laughs> you wanna put the beer in it? <laughs> That's what we need. I need a little uh, hanger that has multiple steps for when the water goes down, 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 and I just sit the beer in it to keep it cold. Except I don't drink beer out here normally. <laughs> I have enough trouble not uh, burning myself when I'm sober. Yep, Earl's the one, for folks who might remember, uh, he's the one that did the cross country, country trip with me that involved a, a stay over in Wyoming. An extended stay during a, a bit of a, you know, a spring blizzard. So that was a fun challenge. Actually, it was a, it was a really fun trip for me. It was, it, it was a good time. And it was when I first started using um, coal. Uh, which, by the way, that's the bag that I, like I said, there's, okay. a farrier, there's a farrier supply here that I can go and get the exact same stuff your brother gave me. You know, it's really funny. Stephen was at all of those events with us, and yet I don't remember him blacksmithing at all while we were. And now he's a smith, huh? got ourselves a beautiful day out here today. Sunshine again, which means everything's going to be hard to see still. And I've got to wrap up today in about 15 minutes so I can go see Beetlejuice with my wife. That's going to be a fun show. Um, the Broadway show, not, not the movie show. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, might just leave Earl out here to keep doing what he's doing. All right. 
right, let's put the dimple in there. We're gonna use See if I can save us from all this sun. Oh my gosh, how dare it. We're in the Pacific Northwest. We're not supposed to have this stuff. Hi, Bruce. Shop dog. Take care, Tim. <laughs> Kevin, see if you come visit. That's the kind of friend you get when you get me. You get to use all my stuff, including my beer. And that's absolutely right, Rob. Human hands just make a really good pair of tongs. I grew up a poor blacksmith. We didn't have tongs. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I've got tongs now, but... I always like to have my hands on it. Yep. I you okay? Come here. Come here, Bruce. Open the door. Come on, Bruce. Come on. Come on, Bruce. Come on, Bruce. Come here. Did she hurt you? I don't think so. She scared him more than Yeah. She does not like doggies. You gotta leave her alone. She's not a big puppy. She gives him an attitude adjustment every now and then. Now you got to find out if it's going to fit under the lip. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hold on. Whoop. They didn't get the tilt up. Whee! Proof of concept. <laughs> Cheers. does work best as a struck tool. Yeah. <laughs> For those of you who might be wondering about the shirt, I'm a part of uh, FAVA, which is the Florida uh, Artistic Classroom Association. Uh, I'm out of South Florida, but there's uh, chapters all over, all over Florida. Go to our website, blacksmithing.org. You got the actual blacksmithing.org? Yeah. Wow. We, 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 we
jumped into that pretty quick when we saw what the web was doing. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had joined when I was way back when. I've actually talked to a number of people. Kurt, uh, Kirk, Kurt, Sullen. Yep. Yeah. I chat with him from time to time. I'm actually on the web page, uh, on the Facebook page. Yeah, there's 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 organizations like that all over. All oh yeah. I'm sure there's one up here. Oh yeah, there is, and I have to go all, uh, about two hours away to get to it. Oh, okay. Um, it's down in Longview. That's a little tough. Yeah. My luckily where we meet is at uh, Peter Hill's farm. Uh, you know Peter Hill from uh, longtime blacksmith. He's mostly a bladesmith now, uh, but he, you know, he keeps his skills up. He's very good, very good teacher. Uh, he's got a little farm about ten minute drive from me that we do all the blacksmithing at. He's got multiple forges. And... All right, let's make some drinks. I had some hammer marks from the... Fennec Fox. Yes, the anvil can get warm. The hammer can get warm. Neither do you lay your hand on all that much. Uh, it's not that big a deal. Rob says salute. Um, most of the time you're swinging the hammer though, so it's cooling off about as fast as you're hitting the metal and pulling it away, hitting the metal and pulling it away. Um, but every now and then you use the hammer to just hold the piece while you readjust the tongue, and yeah, it can get hot, but never hot enough to ruin any kind of uh, hardening or tempering that's been done to the hammer faces, uh, typically. Um, yeah, in my experience, hammers, that's not even warm. Yeah. The anvil is still nice and cool. Yep. Sucking the, sucking the heat right out of my metal. Yep. So what I'm doing now is just some uh, small little dimples, just peening it a little bit, not really doing anything structurally to it other than trying to hide some of my hammer marks. And Fennec, if to just prove it all real well, you can see there's uh, that the, the uh, oh, you can't right now, dummy. Let's switch over to that view so you can see it. Here, Earl's doing a bunch of things here, hitting it with that little tiny um, ball peen. You aren't seeing it. But uh, there's water currently on the anvil. If that anvil were hot, that water would be steaming off. Oh, yeah, it's, it's not. So yeah, I don't know if you can see in the resolution of the camera. I got some, just some dimples, just decorative little, you know, They can. <laughs> decorative little dimples. I'll probably cut it off here. Uh, maybe, maybe, I don't know, do something to it. <laughs> I'm not quite sure yet. That's about it. Now, do you want a hot cut it, or do you want a band saw, or what do you want? Uh, we're gonna, well, we don't have a lot of time. I don't, want to, I don't know if I want to hot cut it. Well, I'll cut it off somehow. I was just going to say, right here. Oh, okay. Well, that's not good. Show folks how that works. Yeah, it's got wax on it from uh, all the waxing I've done previously.
It goes both ways, yeah, whichever no, way you like. Thinking which way I wanted it. And that wax is just going to burn right off as oh, soon yeah, as you no, heat no. it up. Wax is going to burn. Speaking of wax, that's what this is. Okay. <laughs> I know, Kevin. It's almost as exciting as the quench tank cam. The quench tank cam? He's got the hot cut cam right now. Okay. Woohoo, and it's a little warm, too. Oh, yeah, it's warm. Made that one out of a jackhammer bit. Okay. Yeah, biggest reason I, I use a jackhammer bit is they say it's air cooling. What's that? It's air, uh, that it's air hardening. Yes, yes. And so I knew I wasn't really too concerned about screwing up temper or anything like yeah. that. I also have sharp edges here if it's useful. Yeah, those wolf jaw tongs suck. That's why I need something for flat stock. Yeah, it wasn't quite hard enough anyway. It wasn't quite cut enough. Gonna fit? That's the problem I have with the with these forges types. Yeah. Come on, get it in there without screwing up your. Uh, yeah, I mean, I figure I'm gonna have to reline it a few times. Oh yeah, yeah. That should snap off right yeah. now. Yeah, once I get it cold.
that for next time we're we'll playing in the forge. Now you just need to file it a little bit. We'll see, maybe. It should work now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's gonna work. <coughs> Do you want this? It's like a yeah, tone clip. What, yeah, I see what you did there. Yeah. That's cute. No, I don't think it's okay. Finnick, if you're just a happen pants, a happenstance, uh, you know, onto my stream, uh, appreciate you being here. If you uh, happen to know me and I just don't know your uh, handle yet, uh, maybe because of the, you know, new job or something like that, you know, let me know when next you chat with me that you were on my stream. That'd be awesome to see. And of course, if you're really feeling it. Uh, subscription would be nice. So now you've gotten a chance to work with this little forge, get a clue that it's capable of. Is anybody else seeing a delay between the video and the uh, audio? So that quench tank, did I tell you how that came to be? No. That whole thing, I needed a way to mount that uh, post leg vise, right? Okay. And I just, I, I looked at a lot of different ways that people have done it and just couldn't come up with a good solution until I was at a fair re um, uh, near here. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the smith there had this kind of rig. And I was like, well, this is cool. The only thing he had extra that I don't have yet is a tap on the bottom to easily drain it. To drain it, yeah. And that's what he would do, is he would come into fair, he would fill it up, nice. he would have it uh, all ready to go, and then, you know, at the end of the fair, he would uh, drain it. Drain it, and off it goes, yeah. I was like, that's brilliant. I'm definitely doing that. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what's going on today that it's uh, out of sync like that, but since it's going to be a short stream anyway, not, not going to try and solve it today. Ah, I see what you're doing. Nice little taper in. Not a bladesmith. Uh, I'm a decorative blacksmith. Um, think of uh, the difference between a generalist and a specialist. Um, bladesmiths are definitely specialists, and uh, some of the extra skills they have, they spend way more time at uh, a belt grinder or a grinder of some type. In the old days, it was just a grinding wheel, a sandstone wheel, than I like to. Um, I like to be for, forged to finish with just a little bit of cleanup work when it's all said and done. Um, whereas uh, Bladesmith, 
will forge to what they refer to as a blank, forge to a, uh, a shape with extra material on purpose so that they can then grind away the material to reveal the uh, finished product. Uh, it, it, and it just, it's a skill set that um, uh, when I watched blacksmiths, uh, you know, and got enamored with the, the, the craft, um, that wasn't part of the, the skill set they were doing. And it wasn't the part I became enamored with. And as I've watched bladesmiths, because I do, I agree with you, they're, they're, they're incredible to watch. Um, the good ones show you that, that extra effort that goes into it. And most of them will be honest about the fact that either it bores them or it, um, it's uh, calming to them. It's an actual aspect of the art that they, they find calming. And, uh, and for me, uh, it would be tedium. So I don't yeah, do bladesmithing. I, I wouldn't want to stand in front of a grinding wheel for hours and hours. Yeah. Going through the different grits and... Yeah. So I don't do the bladesmithing. Instead, I do like what uh, Earl's doing here right now, which is I'll make things that people um, can put to use in ways that don't involve, you know, cutting people. <laughs> or cutting things, I should say. I shouldn't say people. Uh, but... Um, Oh, inevitably, you get a blade, you're going to cut yourself at least. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's just that's just my take on it. Um, there are a number of really good um, uh, bladesmithing channels out there. Um, I could turn you on to some. Sam Towns, uh, a bladesmith in Australia, is an excellent one to watch as live streams as well. Um, another one that uh, I, I, I mentioned earlier in the stream... You might not have been here at the time, uh, but my, one of my hammers was made by another bladesmith um, by the name, uh, his, his name, um, his forge's name, and you can find his channel, is Fire Creek Forge, and I think he's in Montana. Um, there is another smith, I'm trying to think of his name, he's a master smith, and he does incredible blade work. Um, but I wish I can't. I can't think of his name right now. Uh, but he and his father um, sh uh, have uh, classes even that you can uh, purchase from him to begin bladesmithing. And then there's another fellow I know of who's based out of um, uh, of um, Ukraine, the Ukraine, who's an excellent blade strip bladesmith. His name is Sharap. S H U R A P. If you want to go find him uh, to follow his his work, so yes, there you go, Elijah from uh, 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 what is it, Fire Creek Forge. But yeah, we uh, we have a lot of different folks hanging in the channel who do a lot of different type of uh, blacksmithing. So, welcome to ask questions here. You decided you're going to make a, du a dual a dual sided uh, bottle opener? No, no, no. Oh, you're going to scroll it. Yeah, nice. Yeah, just a little decorative scroll. Nice decorative scroll. Kind of wonky because the edge was a little bonky. Just a little something, a little something, something. I don't know if anybody can see that. Oh, they can see it, but I can make it so they can see it even yeah. better. There you go. Get a nice little tapered scroll in there. This is where the artistic part comes in. <laughs> yeah. Fairly even, actually. Yeah. You did good. Not too bad. There we go, folks. One bottle opener. All right. At that, we call it quits. Or are you going to stay out here and do some more fun? Uh, I might stay for a little bit. But okay. Not much fun, but you can... I'm going to shut down the yeah, show, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. And, uh... Thanks for watching, folks. Uh, try the deal. Tip your server. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll definitely be here again. Same bat time, same bat channel. Uh, next week, uh, you know, uh, and for those that, uh, don't know, uh, because I don't know if it announced it on, uh, during the, uh, chat, but, uh, that, uh, time is 9 30 pacific 
um, every Sunday. So I get out here and I try to put in a couple hours every Sunday. Um, I've got a, a project I'll be working on soon. I've got to do some drawing to figure it out. I've got it already in my head, the vagaries of it. But I, I've, as I proved, um, here I'll show you. As I proved last week, getting to that final piece, and in this case, even getting started, really can use a drawing. <laughs> so there was the drawing I did last week, Earl. Oh, See? there you go, okay. <laughs> it became my chalkboard. I understand, hey. And from that chalkboard came this piece for the for uh, Fennec, not in case you haven't um, seen Artistic Blacksmith. This is not a good example, but it is an example. That's a boot scraper that I made for a challenge last week. So with that, I will share one last thing because uh, we do have a new audience member, and that is uh, the challenge I give. I sign off every week with a simple love and light. But that's a challenge, not a nice, nice nicety or a greeting type of thing. Um, that challenge is to, to not, don't be a part of the, the world of hate that's out there. Spread love, be a light in the world. So with that, I'll show my face one more time. Hi there, and uh, bid you love and light.